Welcome back to our RPG course tutorials and uh, this is basically what we're going to build in this episode. So all we're going to do is add a inputs script and add a character controller and we're obviously going to download and bring this character in our scene. So uh, the end product should be something like this. So we can move our character we can vary the speed of that character movement. And uh, yeah, this is all we're going to do. Super basic stuff, super nice. Okay, so where we left off in the last episode is that we did not have this character, first of all. So we're going to delete that. And all we had is a simple sphere. So uh, we're going to delete the sphere. And we are going to go and download ourselves a 3D model. So to download any of your desired 3D models, head on over to mixamo.com and uh, you can download any of these characters. So you can head on over to characters tab and I don't know, maybe you want this mannequin or this Yolene. So you can select any of those and then head on over to animations. So you don't want to download it straight away. In the animations tab, search for locomotion. Okay, so once you search for locomotion, this is what you should see. You should see all these packs along with these other locomotions. So uh, this is obviously what we want, this locomotion pack with 12 animations. And this is what it should look like inside our scene. So uh, having that selected, just hit download and download. Don't mess with anything in here. Okay, so after downloading your locomotion pack, create a new folder, name it animations, and simply extract everything you see in here inside the animations. Next, after having extracted everything into animations, create a new folder into Unity and name it whatever you want. I'll name it just 3D models. And inside the 3D models, we are gonna drag the animations and drop them in there. Okay, so uh, if we've imported everything correctly, this is what we should end up with. We should end up with this character that has no textures. So we're going to drag him and drop him inside our scene in here. And uh, we have a slight problem that he is all white. He doesn't have any textures and uh, we're going to fix that. So to fix that, we're going to go into our object in here, highlighted, and where we see the location, we are going to change it to use external materials. So hit apply and now we should see him with textures. Okay, now we have our character with the textures. Okay, so after having imported our character with the right textures, let's get down to create some controller scripts. So uh, to do that, I've already created this controller and I've deleted everything that has inside it. So uh, we're gonna write everything that we need. We are gonna also need a input manager since a lot of you want this game to be playable for Android devices. So uh, let's create that. Let's hit create C sharp script and let's call it input manager. Okay, so this is our input manager script. And uh, what we're gonna do in here is we are gonna use something called a enumerator that will allow us to choose between input modes so later on we can just enable mobile controls and uh, keyboard controls so to do that we are going to write internal enumerator or enum and we're going to call it something like input inside the input type we are going to define our inputs and for now i'm going to do keyboard and mobile so writing this just like this will not display anything into our inspector so in order to display it we are going to use something called serializable field private input type and we're gonna call it something like input okay so if we save this script and go back into unity and we are gonna make sure that we have no errors so if we drag this script and drop it into our character up here we should see this slot in here that lets us choose between the game modes so that is what we want I'm just going to unpack this prefab because it's a little bit easier to work with. You don't have to do that. Okay, so now let's actually use this input type. So uh, to use that into update, what we're gonna do is ask if the input is equal to input type dot mobile. Okay, so now we're in mobile and for now we wanna do nothing. In the else statement, what we wanna do is tell 
the inputs to receive the input from the keyboard. And uh, the way you do that is by defining a new function. We're just going to call it void keyboard input. And for that, we are going to just paste in what we did in the last episode. So vertical and horizontal. We obviously don't have these two variables and we are going to define them. We're also going to define them as hidden from inspector. So just do hide in inspector, public, float, vertical, and horizontal. Okay, so uh, after you do that, now we have our input. And uh, let's not forget to call this method into update. Okay, so now we're done with the input manager script. And let's go back into the controller script. So in here, what we want to do is have a reference from this input manager. And a, a great way of saying that is by doing required component. So this is a required component. And uh, you can just say in here type of input manager. So now what this will do is this will require a component called input manager. And if we save this just like this and we go into our game object, we're deleting this input manager and we are only going to drop in our controller we're going to see that it will automatically create a input manager okay so that is exactly what we want next thing is to make a reference to this input manager which is very very easy so uh, say hide in inspector public input manager and we're going to call it something like input manager okay that is easy to remember and easy to use later on. Next thing that we want to do is to initialize this input manager. And the best way of doing that is by using a awake or a start. For now, we're just going to use this start method. So in the start method, we want to say input manager is equal to get component. In the brackets, we will just want to put in input manager. Okay, now we have a reference to the input manager. So all that's left for us to do is to display this inputs. And uh, the way we're going to do that is by using something called a character controller. So we obviously need that character controller. And you, you guessed it, we are going to require that component. So we're going to copy that line and paste it. And instead of input manager, we obviously want a character controller. And the process is the same for this one as well. We want to initialize the character controller. Okay, here it is. We created a reference and we initialized our character controller. Now all that's left for us to do is to tell this character controller to move. And the way we're going to do that is by using a update function. So just say update. And uh, to actually move the controller, it's quite straightforward. So just say con character controller. So here is where we get a little bit tricky. The move component takes in a vector3 motion. So uh, let's create a vector3 variable in here. And we're going to obviously hide it from the inspector. So we just want to keep the inspector as clean as we can. Public vector3. And we're going to call it motion vector. So uh, after creating a vector3 motion, vector we just want to feed the character controller the motion vector and uh, for now this motion vector does nothing so uh, let's give it something to do so uh, here is where we get to use our input manager and this is where we're going to say we're going to say motion vector is equal to transform dot write times the input manager dot horizontal and we want the vertical axis as well. So we want to say transform dot forward times input dot vertical. Okay, now we have our motion vector. We have our character controller. And all that's left for us to do is to head on over to our game and simply play the game. Okay, so uh, let's just hit play and let's see what happens. So if we hit our keys, we're going to see that the character is moving a little bit quicker. But it is moving. So uh, 
as we can obviously tell the character is not very well placed into this capsule so let's fix that let's drag our center of this capsule somewhere in the middle let's make it just a slight bit shorter and let's make it thinner okay so now if we try to play the game it is a little bit better okay now there is just one slight problem we are using update and we're telling the controller to move each frame so uh the problem in here is that if we run this into a mobile device this update will be called less times and the controller will move less times so uh, in order to fix that there's a very simple solution we can just do character controller dot move motion vector times time dot delta time so you're gonna use this time dot delta time quite a while so uh, this is a great way of showing you how powerful this time dot delta time is so just pass in time and uh, go back into unity and we should see a immediate difference so now if we hit play we should see our character moving much slower but if we go ahead and use vsync it should move into the exact same speed okay that is taken care of so for the last thing in this episode well, what I want to do is add in a slider in here that will allow us to change the speed of the movement okay to do that is very straightforward we just want to define a public float movement speed we're gonna default this speed to 2 for now and uh, we're gonna define a range for this speed so uh, to define a range just open brackets say range and define the range from I guess 1 to 4 and uh, after defining the range take the move move speed and paste it into here so now we have motion vector times the speed times time to delta time so uh, now we're done with the scripting we should see a uh, scroll in here and if we hit play let's bring this all the way down to one we should see our speed nice and slow if we bump this over to four we should see our speed is much higher okay so that's about it for this tutorial we're gonna make the animations in the next video so stay tuned for that and uh, i'll see you next time